Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to take a look at uh, C-Band. And I've got the antenna rotated over to 99 degrees west longitude. And uh, yeah, it was a rainy day today, and it's clearing up. But uh, when you're dealing with C-Band and it's raining, it doesn't make a difference. The reason why is because C-Band... It's not affected by rain fade. It punches through everything. And this is a reason why broadcasters use C-band, along with governments and militaries. So guys, today we're actually going to take a look at a military signal. Probably not supposed to show you this, but stick around. The black van is in front of my house. Okay, guys, you're probably wondering what is the Armed Forces Network? If you've not been in the U.S. military, you probably never heard of this network. However, it does operate globally. It is a military network. It is intended for military personnel and uh, to be received on base. Uh, some personnel veterans apparently can receive this service off base with proper authorization. And uh, let's just take a quick look here at links at all of the satellites globally. Uh, this is the one I'm currently picking it up on, Galaxy 16 at 99 degrees west. Uh, there is at 45 degrees, uh, that has a beam on it for Europe and Africa. 34 degrees, I actually could pick that satellite up too. It has a global beam on it, so that would be receivable from my location. And we get more over into Europe, uh, Middle East, uh, it's on SES-5, and many different satellites, uh, Korea Sat uh, on KU band. Now this would definitely not be intended for the North Koreans. But I'm sure there are probably some of them up there trying to pick it up. Probably Kim's got it going in his palace. So you get over to uh, the other side uh, in the Pacific region, 177 degrees west. And there it is, uh, South Pacific. If you're on a South Pacific island or over in uh, Philippines, uh, where else do they got bases? Japan, um, South Korea. Yeah, that's the satellite you would be receiving it off of. So what exactly is the Armed Forces Network? How did it get its start? There's actually quite an interesting Wikipedia article over here. Um, it says it actually started in 1942 and was first the Armed Forces Radio Service, which makes sense. But uh, in 1954, they started a television broadcast service. And uh, it just went from there. Uh, let's take a look, of course, post-World War II. There's Bob Hope and Jane Russell. How cool is that? Entertaining the troops back in the days, the post-war Europe. And uh, yeah, I'll link to this uh, uh, Wikipedia. Korean War, of course, 1950s. And we got Iran, we got Vietnam. Thailand, Taiwan, Caribbean, all of the different places around the world where it had a very important impact. Again, there's Japan and uh, Gulf War, of course, started 1991. And uh, yeah, Freedom, Operation Freedom, Western Europe, media services, programming, uh, quite the history here. So we go over to their actual website and... Uh, so it is basically now kind of like a cable, satellite cable service. There's a bunch of different channels, different themed channels. And uh, this is intended for uh, military personnel. Say you're on board an uh, aircraft carrier out in uh, the Atlantic right now. You're having your lunch in the mess hall. This is probably the programming you are seeing on the TV screens around the ship. And uh, let's take a look now. Manage my decoder. This is interesting. Uh, okay. So in order to receive this programming, you need to have a, a Department of Defense ID number. 
first and last name, birth date, phone number. This is probably if you are uh, a veteran. And uh, let's continue to activate my decoder. Let's register a decoder. Okay, there is a uh, power view. Yep, tracking ID and the user address. And what exactly is that? Well, if we go over to eBay, there is a power view decoder and you can see on the back of it here the tracking number and UA. Um, obviously you'd want to check that, that this, this receiver would work with their system, that this is not a blacklisted receiver. Wow, these are old receivers. My God, I remember these kind of receivers when I, I actually worked at a satellite teleport and we had banks of these things. Um, no wonder they're $54, but hey, if it works, it works. So, okay. Anyhow, so that's basically uh, how it works. Let's go over and look at their schedule. Let's see all the channels they got on here. Okay, they've got their Prime Channel Atlantic, and they've also got a Prime Pacific. So same programming, just probably offset by three hours. They've got a news channel, sports channel, a channel called Spectrum. Oh, they got a second sports channel and family channel and movie channel. They've got their own movie channel. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, really interesting. So basically, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like about eight channels to the service. And uh, there would obviously be specialized programming on there for military personnel only. And they get to still see Magnum PI. You don't get to see Magnum PI everywhere. Man, that was a good show, man. Tom Selleck <laughs> and Higgins. Oh, yeah, there, there's Tom Selleck right there. So he's got his other show on here as well. Really, really cool. Anyways, so there you go, guys. Uh, Secret Satellite Signals. And uh, encrypted with PowerView, and they're using via matrix to kind of control. They try to secure it a little bit stronger because PowerView is not the greatest. But uh, I can't really talk about it on here. But you know, you know, uh, you can do a little bit of googling yourself and figure things out. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, have yourself a good one. Take care. As power settings in a safe environment while also reducing noise pollution in the surrounding area. Mm. We do these objects on our jets because it is important to make sure that it works on the ground before we hand it over to the pilots to take it on their missions.